dialogue about how innovations in genomics and research technology can impact health disparities. In addition to the National Human Genome Research Institute, the series is co-sponsored by the National uh, Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, the National Institute of Minority Health and Health Disparities, the National Institute of Diabetes, Digestive, and Kidney Disease, and the Office of Minority Health of, at the FDA. And I want to thank uh, Dr. Perez Dable, the director of NIMHD, who's here in the audience today. Speakers have been chosen by these five institutes and centers to present their research on the ability of genomics to improve the health of all populations. The speakers in this series approach this problem from different areas of research, including basic science, population, genomics, and translational and clinical research. To introduce our speaker today, uh, I'd like to invite my colleague, uh, Dr. Charles Rattimi, who's the chief of the and senior investigator of the NHGRI Metabolic Cardiovascular and Inflammatory Disease Genomics Branch and director of the Center for Research on Genomics and Global Health. Thank you. Charles. Thanks. Thanks, Vince. Um, again, it's a distinct pleasure here to uh, introduce our speaker. I uh, hope I'm advancing this correctly. Okay. Uh, Richard Cooper, uh, who is uh, my mentor, and um, I've known uh, Richard for many, many, many years. I think since 1992 or so. Uh, he was um, the person who trained me to this point, you know, in terms of uh, whatever I do today uh, at the NIH. Uh, so Richard, indeed, is... Um, his work has provided remarkable insight uh, into cardiovascular diseases uh, in different uh, uh, human populations, especially the African uh, diaspora population. Um, I remember uh, one evening when I was doing my postdoctoral work at uh, Loma Linda, I saw an ad uh, from, from Richard, uh, again, basically in advertising for like an assistant professor position. And I saw this ad, I re after I read it, I told myself this was written for me. And I remember calling Richard, uh, you know, to say that um, you must have had me in mind when you were writing this uh, uh, ad uh, for a position. Uh, the rest is history. Um, I went to Richard for the interview and I got a job as an assistant professor uh, then. And um, my training uh, really, uh, in a sense, started uh, from, that, from that point of view. So I'm sure you probably see some of this when Richard gives a talk, uh, you know, uh, when he starts his talk. What his work has really done for me in terms of my own training is to enable me to have a more critical way of thinking about health disparity um, in a way that um, you, you really have to bring to bear the society within which you are doing this study and how the environment you know, tracks some of these things. So the very first project I worked on with Richard was this uh, you know, uh, publication in 1997 looking at the African diaspora populations. And uh, that was my baptism in the terms of doing population work. And uh, believe me, I learned a lot uh, from working with Richard, going to different African villages um, and the Caribbean to do this work. He demonstrated clearly the importance of environmental factors. So that, to me, is really part of the um, wonderful training that I received. Uh, also, uh, working with Richard, I remember we, we do talk, uh, like in the evening in the office, and the following morning, Richard comes back. He has these two or three pages of what we talked about, and I'm always scratching my head. How can you write this quickly? Uh, so that was some of the really interesting thing that I picked up, again, from Richard. And his studies really has shed light in, into understanding, um, um, you know, hypertension, especially in African Americans. Because initially when I started working with Richard, you hear all these things. People describe hypertension in African American as if it's some kind of different physiological problem. That it's almost not, you know, other human beings don't have the same pains. And uh, by doing work uh, in different African populations and in global populations, he was able to put the African American experience in perspective. And that has stuck with me over the years. 
One of the things that we share light on, you know, is really this issue of the slavery hypothesis. I remember this publication in Scientific America, which with uh, Rick Wood, uh, who has now passed away, a good friend of Richard and myself, uh, where there was these people thinking about, oh, the slavery and the survival of African American during the slave trade more have selected upon some kind of uh, variants that is putting in African American at risk for blood pressure. I remember Richard you know, saying, Charles, we have to test this out. And uh, we collected these samples and did a genotyping for angiotensinogen. And uh, what it turns out is that although the frequency is high in African, but it really 